All right, my name is Jaron Matheson, the host of the Upstream Podcast, and today's guest is a long friend from high school, right. one of the oldest friends I have today that I still talk to. Um, there's maybe one other person, which is a mutual friend, Brett yeah. Kabeck. Yeah, yeah. But outside of that, he's probably the longest person I've known that I'm in communication with. We started a band together when I was a senior. <laughs> he was in ninth grade. Yeah. And it was called Abaya with two other guys, Josh Davis and Josiah Laternal. Yep. And yep. have had a lot of fun with him through the years. After mm. high school, we kind of dropped off, didn't really talk a whole lot. And then we've rekindled here and there. And then in the last year or so, he's got some great business ideas that we were talking about. And he had one particularly that I loved. And I told him I want to invest in it. And he said, no, right away. <laughs> and I was like, dang it, hurry up, make up your mind. I want to put some money into it. Uh, and so today we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and his name is Ted Nelson. Yeah. Awesome. Hey everyone. Thanks for having me on Jaron. Glad we've been able to kind of rekindle over entrepreneurship. I'm glad that that's the topic that we're talking about. Cause that's kind of what uh, brought us back together after all these years. So it's been, yeah, it's really cool. Really happy to be here, man. Yeah, awesome. man. Thanks for coming on. And then you have a very fun, exciting thing you're going to do tonight. Next level experience. NLE, you've been hyping Ooh. it up for, gosh, a, almost a year now, I think. It, I, more even? I don't know. You've been talking about it for a while. So we're excited to do it. Christine's here with me. We're going to do it together as a couple. So I know you said that that was a really important thing to do. So yeah, we're, we're excited to finally be there. and. I don't know. Get some good vibes. I don't know. See what happens. Yeah. So mysterious, man. <laughs> yeah. Some, you got some steak. <laughs> we'll talk to you on the other side of that on Monday morning. But yeah. um, so um, the the name of the podcast is Upstream. And I always ask everybody, when you hear that word, what is the first thing that comes to your mind or like a sentence or a paragraph when you hear when you hear that? Yeah, I guess when I hear the word upstream, I just think of I guess, uh, kind of what comes before. Right. So if I'm if we think of it upstream and the partner relationship that being downstream, I think of like, what is it that's before? What is maybe what's what's gotten me here or like what's upcoming? So it's kind of I don't know. That's a, that's there's a lot of different ways that you can you can go with a cool name like that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I like what's upcoming. It's that's no one's ever said that yet. Like, that's that's really good. It makes me think of of kind of the whole thing of like life, the journey of going on it is so adventurous and you don't know what's going to actually come up. Yeah. Totally. And there's so many things that you can run into. And one of the things like we want to talk about is entrepreneurship and just dive into what does it take to build a small business? And I'm just going to let you kind of just yeah. tell me about your experience in life on that. I have a ton of stuff, but I just want to sure. hear you what do you think, Ted, it takes to build a small business and how are you having fun with that right well, now? Well, yeah, man, when uh, when I figure it out, I'll let you know. No, <laughs> no. Um, no I think um, this kind of goes back to a book that I've read recently um, called Start With Why. And I think you've I think you might have read that one too. I love that uh, with Simon Sinek. Yeah, dude, it's so good. Start With Why because, you know, in in my journey through first of all like just being okay with and accepting the fact that i want to be an entrepreneur i struggled with that for a long time right just i'm just like you know you grow up and you're like oh you need to have a nine to five job and you need the stability and you need the this and that but really like i kind of always wanted more you know i wanted to be kind of driving my own driving my own bus in this life right and and kind of in control and not punching somebody else's clock, which I think is something that a lot of people share. But going back to the starting with why, the biggest thing that I've recently come to is like, bring out why it is that you want to do what it is that you want to do. You know, a lot of people, it's family or it's, you know, like your children, like I want to leave a legacy, stuff like that. And I think what it boiled down to for me was that I really just want to help and I want to have the financial resources to be able to help other people because that's a big thing for me. Um, so that's really kind of at the core. So once you've kind of established what your core is and why you're doing what you are doing, then you everything kind of just derives from there. 
Mm-hmm. Right. I think another big reason you need to know your why is because it's going to get really hard. Yeah. And if you don't know why you're doing what you're doing, when the times get hard and the shit hits the fan, right. And there's no money in the bank account. Yes. Your wife is crying. Yes. Can't feed the kids sometimes. And you're chasing your dream. Yeah. You're going to quit and you're going to go back to the nine to five job yep. and you're going to, you're going to not leave the rat race then, but you're going to wish that you hadn't done that in years to pass that come in. Like what, I had this thought one time, a couple times where I'm like, when I'm 85 years old and I look back at my life, will I regret anything? And it's interesting because I moved down here to Dallas to take a job opportunity. That's right. Yeah. And so it wasn't necessarily to go after being an entrepreneur. It was to, to, to work with Patrick Bet David. That's right. And I just remember I was like looking at Leah, my wife, I'm like, when I'm 85 and I'm like at the near the end of my life, I'm like, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it. Even yeah. if I fall on my face and this doesn't work. Yep. And the funny thing is, is I'm kind of fell on my face and it hasn't really worked. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been days where I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, I want to be back in my work truck, you know, making the uh, hundred thousand dollar, basically salary a year, safe know, job. I got know. a pension. I got a 401k. And, but that doesn't last long because like what you said, like you, why are you doing it? And for me, yeah. it's your family. It's like a legacy. It's like, I want, I want to, I want to live a life that's not normal and not average. And so to do that, you have to take risks and to do that, you got to be bold. You yeah. have to be willing to fail and fall on your face. And if you aren't going to do, if you're not yeah. willing to fall on your face and fail, you're not going to succeed. And I think that's like, when I look at the why, then when the hard times come, I go, I'm not doing this. For just me i got right. my wife my kids yeah. my friends my family like yeah. i look at all these people in my life in this tribe and community i'm a part of and yeah. that's what keeps me going that's my why yeah yeah no that's awesome and i know that's i mean that's obviously a huge driving factor there's a couple of things that you said in that that like you know just it's like um i guess to um to go back to something biblical like you know the the wise man built his house upon a rock right? Like what's your rock? Mm -hmm. You know, you need to know what that is. What are you building your found? Like what's your foundation? What's your core? Because yeah, when it hits the fan, you need something to fall back on. You need something that you can just, what's your lifeline almost, right? Like that's your lifeline. Your why is your lifeline to go back to like, no, I need to, I need to push through. I need to keep doing this because of this, this, and this, because this is why I do this. My family, my friends, what have you. So no, absolutely. And then you said something else in there. Um, (laughs) <laughs> there's almost it's almost an i guess an oxymoron but it's like you have to be willing to fail in order to succeed mm-hmm. right and i think that growing up there's a lot of pressure and a lot of competitiveness um that we grow up with which is not always a bad thing but it can also drive you just to like um you always want to succeed right you always have to win. You got to get A plus report cards all the time, every time, you know, or you're not doing it right. But man, how many businesses did I fail before I realized like, okay, it's fine. You're practicing business, right? It's all right. Like it was a small business. It was basically just me, maybe a couple of freelance people helping, you know? So it's not like there were people's lives, like livelihoods on the line. It was like, okay, cool. That didn't work. Chalk that one up and we're going to move on. And I just learned a whole bunch of things not to do. So yeah, the, the failing to win like you're the, the failing first to succeed is really huge. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, what's funny about school <clears throat> is I always yeah, thought it's, <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. I always thought it was weird in school when you go take a test and you know you're shooting to try to make a hundred out of a hundred and you're trying to get an a and every time you get a check mark or a red mark on your thing you get back you know there'd be people in the room that would be like upset yeah and and i'd be like but but now you learned what the answer isn't and so then you go into real life yep and that's just it's a different world than how school works. So you're like, Oh, now I know, I know what not to do. And then also mm-hmm. you, when you do tests in school, you, you know, you're like trying to find out like how you, how good you are. And you're trying to get put in this box where like when the real life comes, it's like, I like this, like Henry Ford, he had some kind of saying or quote of like, if I don't know the answer, I just pull out my Rolodex and I'll just call somebody. And there's, yes. there's something to that about like <clears throat> in school, we're taught to just 
learn the answer and know it, but there's so much information, especially in today's day and age with the technology and our phones, you can't know everything. And so when you're not working as a team in life and you're more individualistic, mm-hmm. how school kind of teaches you, right. you kind of get stuck in that nine to five rat race. But when you yeah. think of a different mindset of like, I'm going to use my resources and my team and everything I do, you're not cheating. I always thought it's funny. Yeah. I'm like, well, if I want to get the answer, I know three rows down knows this stuff. And I know two rows up <laughs> knows this stuff, but I can't ask them. But the moment I leave the building of the school, right. I can go ask them and call them and say, Hey, if I need to do this in a real life application, how would I do this? Yeah. But I come back into the four walls of a school. I yep. can't ask them. And I'm like, that was always so weird to me of how what we're being taught is so different from a life ap- application. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny. Uh, my nephew is going through that right now. He's like, he's 10. And my mom just texted me and said something about he's having, I think it's uh, adding subtracting fractions or something like that, you know? And it's like, there's all these new curriculums and stuff. I'm getting a little bit off topic here, but these, these new curriculums that, just teach you that they just teach you how that you yourself can just get to the right answer yourself and these processes that you can use which to me if there's anything that's cheating it's that it's using these little little cheat methods to yeah sure do you get to the right answer yeah that's fine but how'd you get there and why and do you actually have the understanding of why a half of a cup plus a half of a cup equals a whole cup no you just know that the one over two plus the one over two equals two over two you know, it's like, I don't know, that that's always kind of thrown me off too when it comes to stuff like school. But anyway. Yeah, this just goes into, so. this is <clears throat> about entrepreneurship and to, to create your own business, you have to think differently. Yeah. Like if you're going to succeed, you got to be okay with getting the red check marks and getting a couple Fs and yeah. Ds because you're going out there and you're like, I don't know what I'm doing. When you can't do it yourself. That's the other thing too, man. Yeah. The biggest thing that I was struggling with is just like, man, and that's why I held off on even like, having you come in on it is just because i'm like no i got to do it myself i got everything yeah. and uh you know talking about even the app uh development i'm like oh maybe i can just write an app myself that'll be a blockbuster you know and yeah. it's like no you can't like build a team build a freaking team and be good be okay with it you know it's yeah. like you don't have to be the army of one out there as a matter of fact 98 times out of 100 like you're you, you're not going to succeed that way got to have your, your your team around you and, and be cool with relying on other people. Yeah. That's, that's like a difference between if you want to build a product or you want to build a company. Like if you want to build a product and throw it on Amazon or Shopify sure. and sell t-shirts or sell a course, yeah. you can make millions of dollars and do that. But if you want to build a successful company, you have to build a team, like you said, yeah. and you have to have leadership and leadership is a whole aspect inside the company. That's a different skill set than actually running like numbers, financial spreadsheets, like business stuff. And to have a really good leader running your business is so Mm -hmm. key because like what you were talked about just a minute ago is so important with your why. Why -hmm. is your company doing what you're doing? If you want to do it on your own, well, you're going to run into things that you don't know. You're going to have to ask somebody something at one point. Now you can Mm -hmm. own your home business hundred percent, but you still have to build a team. Yeah. Me personally, I've, I've never done a business by myself. I've always had a partner. Okay. Because I'm just wired that way where I would like to have someone in the game with me mm-hmm. that's ready to go through it. And it's not just me. A lot of people aren't wired that way. I'm wired that way. I want to do business with people because my strength is people and relationship. Yeah. And so if that's one of my strengths, it would be silly of me not to bring a couple people in or one pers- person in that's really good at what they do mm-hmm. because it it amplifies what I'm good at. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something that was really awesome about bringing you in was like, you know, you've already been through app development and all that stuff before and, and, you know, entrepreneur owned a couple of businesses already successful. Um, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm tired of trying to like do figure this all out by myself, you know, like I'd love a, like even, I, I kind of see you as a mentor a bit too, you know, like, um, aside from just a business partner, but um, just cause you've, you've, you've been through it before. And, you know, when I got out of high school, I kind of <laughs> kicked rocks for a while and did some dumb stuff and kind of trying to find my way. And, you know, you were out there crushing it. And so it was like, you're just kind of a couple steps ahead of me. So that was really awesome to be able to bring you in on that. And it's like, I can, I can already tell based on, you know, what we've been able to accomplish so far that, you know, it was definitely the right move to build, build a team. 
Yeah, man. I love being in. Now we got to tell everybody what we're doing. So sure. the fact that you brought me in, tell us what, tell us everybody what we're doing. Okay. All right. So uh, we developed an application uh, that is in the uh, freelance audio visual uh, workforce space, um, which is a convoluted, convoluted way of saying that we went out to solve the problem of labor coordinating in a, um, in a space that's very highly a freelance uh, space. So um, it's not a lot of hired on employees, W-2 employees. It's almost, it's crazy. It's almost exclusively 1099 contractors. And the events business, um, I mean, it's several billion dollars, just the labor aspect of several billion dollars just in the United States alone. Um, and- and and this mm -hmm. is going to be worldwide, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is going to be worldwide. You know, um, there's definitely some big, big hurdles to overcome as far as like, you know, labor laws in other countries and stuff like that, where we'll have to have a pretty bang and legal team. But, mm -hmm. you know, once we get there, absolutely. hundred percent, you know, but we're starting, starting with Central Florida right now is the big market. But um, yeah, so basically we went and we decided we tried to figure out how to automate as many things as we could. Um, the process is, uh, it's a little bit, it's difficult. Um, I think the biggest challenge with it is you're dealing with a lot of people, right? And there's all sorts of different types of people. And so managing hundreds of people on an event is a difficult process. And finding those people and getting them to show up at the right place at the right time, getting them all the information, paying them on time, all those sorts of things. Um, it's all has been done, uh, with a, with a person, right. Called a labor coordinator. Um, there's labor companies that have been used to facilitate that. And basically what we wanted to try to do is we wanted to solve that because it's just a really messy, messy, messy deal. There's people that you're, you're not getting paid on time. You're net 30 as a contractor normally. And now what we do is we pay two days after the end of the event. You know, so and that's, that's like, and that's not normal in this industry. It's not right? normal at all. Like it's net thirty plus because there's a lot of there's a lot of shisty labor providers out there. You know, and I just I worked for a huge one at one point as a labor coordinator, and that's kind of where we got this idea. Um, and yeah, they were sh really did not treat the technicians very well. It was like um you know refer just kind of referring to them as inventory like I'm, how much inventory do we have in dallas you know and it's like man those are real people man like you know and treat them you know like treat them with some respect like there's another real person on the end of that phone call yeah. that you just had like blackballed uh never working for me again uh and it's like dude you had a bad day man like his mom's in the hospital like chill out you know but that's like the attitude and it's just it's just completely fast backwards man like you can't treat people like that so yeah so the the app is called Elsie. Mm. App is called Elsie. Yeah. It's called Elsie. Um, and how yeah. is it spelled? Yeah. E L C I E. And if you look at the branding, if you look at the name, we do um, lowercase E and then a capital L and C in the middle. So it's kind of a tip of the hat to what it actually does, which is basically your virtual online labor coordinator. All right. So we call her L. C, mm -hmm. right, which is a pretty common abbreviation. There's a lot of abbreviations in the production manager, PM, so that system manager, AM, so LC. So yeah, so you'll see LC out there. Um, feel free to join. Feel free to sign up. It's free, completely free platform. No freemium, no anything. We don't charge a subscription fee. So um, I think that was another big part of it too, is it's like, there's a lot of like pay to play gig boards out there where mm -hmm. people can, you can like post an event like, oh, I need 10 stage hands on February 2nd. Um, but people have to like pay to be on that to even see it. And, uh, I don't, I don't think that's right. I think you should be able to see what the work is out there and, you know, we can, we can monetize it just fine by, by charging a service fee at the time of booking, which is what we do. So nobody pays to sign up, not even the production companies. There's no, um, subscription software there. And so then it scales directly with your business too. So if you only need two people, every once in a while you're not paying this you know five hundred dollar subscription every month for a platform that you only use every once in a while because we want to appeal to everybody and you know it can scale directly with the size of your business and the size of your 
size of your event. Yeah. You know what I like? A another book called Blue Ocean Strategy. And I feel like we talked about this. Yeah. And as you're creating this, this is what excited mm -hmm. me about building LCO is, and I'm not from this space at all, right. but I did create an app and I've gone through development and I've created a few businesses. Mm -hmm. And I like that book, Blue Ocean Strategy, because it's all about, you know, you have red ocean and blue ocean. Red ocean is shark infested. Everyone's fighting and, and being competitive. A blue mm -hmm. ocean is like we're doing in the same industry, but we're doing it a little bit different. Yeah. And I feel like Elsie just has this, this kind of like, you know, complete blue ocean where we're, we're doing the same thing, but in such a better way that yeah. we're not even competing with the other label coordinators because the other part that's cool is we were just talking about this yeah. as I picked you up to get here of another aspect to the app that we can keep adding on where when you have, just like you said, they're, they're calling people, they're emailing. Yeah. When we have this software that we're creating, we can keep adding and improving it. And then you build this community and everyone's just going to want to jump on. And there's so many more right. things to come from it of like the snowball effect that I see this app doing in this company is so cool because it's just enough different of how it's always been done yeah. that if people are willing to adapt, it'll just go crazy. Yeah. And really part of that blue ocean, and I haven't read that book yet, but, um, I should put it on my list. Uh, I might actually be there already. Um, part of it is that it's really, it's like a free market model, you know, where technicians can go in and they, um, they set their own rate. They set how much their time is worth. Cause that's like kind of one of the pillars that we started this on was like, you're the only person who knows what your time is worth to you. It's your most valuable asset. You can't get any of it back right? You never, you don't know how much you have you can walk out of this building and be gone. I don't know that. So whatever your time is worth to you, because what, what's someone paying you for, right? What they're paying you for is to take time away from your life, your family, your friends, the people that matter to you to go off and perform a certain task, right? That's what I'm paying someone to go and do. Right. So you're the only person who knows what that's worth to you to take you away from your people, from where you need to be. Right. So I can't put a price on that. And that's how the current model has been like, oh, no, we're going to pay you two hundred fifty dollars for the day to go and do this and this and this. Well, sorry, I'm not available for that amount. Here's my rate. Four hundred dollars, whatever it is. Right. Um, something that I've. In reading entrepreneur books and going to some conferences and stuff, you it's something that you start to learn is that your time is valuable. It's the most valuable thing you have. Your money is nothing. Your car is nothing. It doesn't matter. Like your time is all that you like. That's what matters. Right. And so like, I, I have a problem with taking people's time and insisting that I pay them for this amount of money. But like, I don't know. Sorry, that's that's no. like that's something that I like am really, really adamant about that. It's just like I don't get to tell you that's not my place. You establish what this is worth to you. And then you might sit on your couch at home for weeks on end because you might charge just a completely asinine rate that nobody's ever gonna pay. But it's your rate, and that's what you've established. And you've decided that I would rather be here if you can't pay me this amount. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's hundred percent. You're right. I love it because like you said, at the end of the day now is it puts it back on the person that wants to go work, what they're willing to trade their time for money on. Yep. And it's a complete free market system now yep. of like you, when you just said, like if someone doesn't want to go work cause their rates are too high or they, I mean, they want to work, but their rates are no one wants to hire them. Yeah. They can't, but then, but if their value is there, they will get hired at the Absolutely. rate because people, will know who they are. They've been in the system. They've done jobs. And like, I yep. want that guy and I'm willing to pay more yep. because I know he's responsible. I know he's reliable. Yep. I know he's going to get the job done. Yep. And that's, what's going to be fun as this gets built out is to see how people will be able to advance inside in the platform because they will be a known name yeah. in their, their reviews. And mm -hmm. they're going to be like, well, how can this guy get another $200 and I can't get a job, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm 200 less and, and I'm almost over, you know, it's, it sounds like I'm over the yeah. budget. It's like, well, you haven't built your reputation up yet. And I think that's yeah, one yeah. thing that's, that's key is it's all about relationship and knowing people. And it's like, 
when you you want to work with people you know, you want to work with people you trust. And as you build out this profile inside this app, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to actually build a reputation about you in this industry that everyone's going to see. Yeah, yeah. And you can and you can financially leverage that reputation to be able to you know, uh, demand a higher rate for what you do, you know? I mean, there's a saying that um goes around that you're only as good as your last gig, right? And it's all just it's such a word of mouth um industry. So much, so much. It's just it's so word of mouth. It's like how do you even it's even how these like other big labor companies work. It's like, hey, you know, Joe, get on this um, such and such X Y Z labor with me. You know, they uh, they pay twenty five dollars more per day than these other guys, and they pretty much always pay on time. <laughs> you know, and it's like it's like that's how this has worked in the past. And it's like it's a broken system. You know, it like I've heard it being referred to as like the Uberization, mm-hmm. right? you know, the Uberizing a, a, a market. And I think that's fairly accurate. You know, I think that, you know, when Uber came out, that they were really good with what they did. They were absolutely um, complete innovators uh, in this ride share market. They, you know, we've both watched yeah, that, yeah. Uh, a documentary oh, yeah. on it, which I think was really a little intense, but awesome. It was very intense. Very awesome. <laughs> really awesome. And yeah, I can kind of see a lot of parallels of like, okay, yeah, we're just going to go disrupt this because I don't like it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm over it. Yeah. No, I I love disruption. I love being a disruptor. And this is the challenge now is we're building this business, right? And it's, it's, it's a tech, it's an app Mm -hmm. and we're going to run it. You're going to run into hurdles of getting stuck. And so this is going back (laughs) to, you can have the best (laughs) idea ever. It can be the coolest thing. It can solve every problem and it doesn't mean it's going to win because there's so many hurdles to overcome. And a lot of it is in entrepreneurship is you have to conquer your mind. You have to be willing to go farther than you think you can. You have to be willing to sacrifice things that others aren't willing to sacrifice. Yeah. But most importantly, you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe you can do it, that's the number one thing that I believe why people fail is because they'll start something, they'll get going, they got all hyped up, they thought of, oh, we're going to make millions of dollars. And then all of a sudden it gets hard and they're like, okay, well maybe this isn't going to be as easy as I thought. And then they hit another wall and then another wall. And then what happens is, is they forget to believe that they can do it. And this is why it's so important to go back to why I like to have a business partner is because you can tag team. And when someone else is down, it's like, no, man, I got your back. Like I got you. And this is also with family. This is community Mm -hmm. is if you got people that believe in you, you can go conquer the world. At least I can. When yeah. I got people behind me and I know I do, like I'm all in. It's like, get out of my way. Yeah. It's because I'm not alone. That's awesome. And then I also think there's an aspect of teaming up with God and honoring him um, in business and doing a kingdom in a kingdom way. Like there's a lot of people that are all out for money, greed and themselves. And they do, they, they make big businesses get it. Yep. They, and they kill it. But I, I do think we're in a time and an age where there's a lot happening in this world. And I do think there's like a shaking that's happening. And I think God wants to take over the business realm from a kingdom aspect. And that's what I've been really passionate and excited about is things are going to be different. And I think there's going to be grace. And I think there's going to be ease at believers taking over business areas just like this. And it doesn't make sense because we're not going to end up doing a lot of the heavy lifting he is. And it's really interesting. I remember reading the Bible one time and the wall, like the, ta- like the Jericho, like walking yeah. around and I'm like, why would you like who in their right mind would go like, Hey, let's go get the music instruments. Yep. Put the swords down. Yeah. We're going to just, the wall's going to fall down. Yep. Yep. And I think that's, what's really cool is, is because if you actually are listening to God and it's like, Hey, I got this beautiful plan for you. But we're not going to use swords. We're going to use the trumpets. And you're like, that makes no sense. Right. What? But that's what's cool is, is if you're seeking God and like, hey, he can bless things and he can, he can do things that we can't do. And I think sometimes we forget like to put the sword down and go get the trumpet. Yeah. And part of it is we're just not listening. We're not asking what to do. And I think that's a shift that's happened to me lately is like, all right, God, like, like, what do you got for me? What are we doing here? Like, let's do it your way. Let's go get the trumpet and let me put the sword down. I like, I'm a yeah. sword guy. 
I like to attack. <laughs> so I'm like, let me go put the sword down and let's get the trumpet and let's go seven times around and let's let's blare his music. Yeah. And that's what excites me is because at the end of the day, like even business is cool, family, but I do believe God is awakening the earth right now. Yeah. And and something's gonna happen and he's gonna do it in business, man. Well, and I think that kind of can even double back to what you were talking about with leadership too. And I think really like leading with a pure heart <laughs> is something that people really like, even, even, you know, non-Christian, non-faith-based people just like, they just want to see that your whoever's in charge of your business, whoever the leader is, the owners are, are really coming from a, like a more pure place. And I know transparency is a really big thing too, just as far as, um, like you're talking about, there's there's people who just are out for the money, just money, 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 just super greedy, and that's all that it's about, you know. But I think that everybody really wants to see it. Like, well, like, um, what's the dude shoes, right? <laughs> there you go. Hey, dudes, I hey got dudes. them on. Yeah, hey, dudes, right? Because they give back, right? They they make a they fit a spot in the market, a comfy loafer style shoe. And uh, they give back. I don't know their entire story. What do they, you know what they do? Where do they give to? I don't know. Man. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I know that that's kind of a big thing that people look for too. And that can, that can kind of fall in with, you know, what you're talking about. The kingdom is like, it's, it's going to start to matter. Yeah. There's, there's just a bigger purpose. And that's, what's fun yeah. when you do business is it's not about you mm-hmm. and we want to go make money. You have to make money to yeah. make business work. You have to make money to live. And but that's just like the tool. That's the gas in the car to get you to where you want to go. Yeah, yeah. But you want as much as you can because then you can go do lots of stuff. Like yeah, yeah. there's, I've been really getting in a different mindset of like, I just want to go gather as much wealth as I can that the Lord wants me to have because then I can go use it. And I know I'm going to use it in a good way. And it's really fun to go build businesses because it's the fastest way to go make wealth. Like you can become a millionaire and make tons of money at a nine mm-hmm. to five job with the right job. You can yeah. be a lawyer. You can be a doctor. Yeah. You can, you can work and get a pension yeah. and you, you can, you can make mm-hmm. money, but like to go create generational wealth, you it's entrepreneurship. It's going yeah. building businesses. It's taking risks and it's putting it all on the line. Yep. No, absolutely. And I think that's one of the big things too. Go, going back specifically to Elsie is that like, um, you know, it, Elsie is just a product, right? It, the company name is the tech enrichment network mm-hmm. key in on the enrichment part right because one of the things that i think that we have been missing out on in that particular business is building back uh building the people up around you right which only makes sense because like these these are the people that are going out and making money they're your assets right why would you not want to invest back into your assets right so one of the things that we're hoping to do is do like enrichment classes and helping people kind of navigate because when you're a, when you're an independent contractor, you are your own little mini business, right? So you got to file your own taxes. You got to save for your taxes, you know, <laughs> like big thing that people miss is like, is, ain't nobody taking your tax money out for you. You still have to pay all those taxes. So like, it's like helping people navigate that and then just navigate life in general, you know? Um, so Definitely, definitely in that same vein for sure. 100%. Cool. Well, from an entrepreneur, a small business, building it, what are the top three things that have been the biggest challenge for you building this app out right now? Um, well, I think this is going to sing true with a lot of people. Um, trying to bootstrap it was really like getting over getting over that, like needing to be the one man army. Mm. That was number one, probably getting in my way. It was like, you, you can ask for help. You know, I, you put in to help finance. Um, so it's like just setting your pride aside. You know, you don't have to do it all by yourself. As a matter of fact, you shouldn't like you keep saying, you know? So like that was probably number one. Um, number two, um, in a, in a tech world, gosh, it's it's everywhere I should say, but 
just the unseen, you know, like you, th- right when you think you've got it figured out, you're like, Oh, sweet. Okay. This new feature. Oh dude, we're starting to process payments. Oh, this is glorious. Everything is great. Wait a minute. I just got triple charged for a payment that I made. What is going on here? Oh my gosh. The world is crumbling and everything's, and then my clients are going to hate me. And then the techs are never going to sign up. And you know, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. It's like, no, pump the brakes. It's okay. Like Mm -hmm. you're in a growth stage right now. There's going to be this, you know, and like, all I had to do is just reach out to text and be like, Hey man, just a couple, couple of development things that we're, we're tweaking. And like, Oh yeah, it's all good. It's, it's a new thing. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, we're all good. I'm like, Oh, okay. So I was the one making this a big deal. You, everyone else was fine. Mm-hmm. It was just a big deal to me, you know? Cause I think when you're personally invested in it, you know, you're just like, Oh, this, you know, I, my baby is falling apart. Like, Oh, what's happening. And this is the biggest deal in the world. And it's like, oh, everything's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. So like realizing that just, just being, being able to just kind of sit back and be like, it's all going to be good. That was, that was a really big thing. Um, I don't know. What would be number three? Oh, well, I guess kind of almost in the same way, but like being willing to fail, being willing to fail, like specifically with this one, you know, just like, it, it's okay to make a mistake. Like it's okay to try something. I was listening to uh, another SaaS podcast on the plane ride over here um, last night. And gosh, there was a a quote and I should have written it down. But he said, uh, to the effect of the one who succeeds in a market is the one who has just tried as many things as they could as quickly as they possibly could. So which basically kind of says you tried as many possible things as you could. You found out all the ones that didn't work like that Thomas Edison quote of like, I found a, you know, a thousand ways to not make a light bulb. Right. So all those failures and then you're like, boom, okay, we found it first because we're all sifting through the same minefield, right? We're all trying to find our way. If you're in the same marketplace, you're back to the, the, you know, blue waters, red waters thing you talk about, right? It's like, we're all in this same Mm -hmm. space trying to navigate this same space and when it's brand new and you're trying to be innovative, you don't necessarily have a roadmap. Like you're, you're going off of your past experiences, but the only other thing that's going to get you to your destination is trying to get there. Like you just have to keep trying, keep trying to get there. Mm-hmm. Right. And you're going to find a whole bunch of wrong ways to go. And then finally, you're going to pick the right way at the right fork in the road. And it's going to be it. And, and you just have to be willing to do that. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I think the, the things that I've learned is instead of react, respond. Okay. Very um, good. Yeah. Stay calm. Like you said, it's not, it's not as big deal as you think. Yeah. And while you're building things out, um, take the 30,000 view up, get out, of, get out of the day to day, get out of the mess, yeah. get in the airplane and go look at your city that you're building and see the structure. Right. Yeah. When you're in the city, Um, like literally next time you get in a plane and you're by a window, really look at it the whole way out and just look at how the sidewalks disappear. You can't, you can barely see the cars, but like you can see these things really close when you're there. But what you, what happens is, you know, they're there, but you're seeing the infrastructure. You're seeing where they put the industrial part. You're seeing where the homes are. You're seeing where the parks are. You can't see how you build a city when you look at it, like point on like this, you can see it from up above. And so, and same thing in a business, when you have like a little fire over here, you're like, Oh my gosh, it's like the whole thing with the three times payment. But you're like, but the whole city has no idea that's happening. And that's kind of same thing. Like, like, Oh, it's no big deal. And so when you're, when you can pull yourself back more on a regular basis and start responding instead of reacting to things, Mm -hmm. things get done differently. And it's not from emotion too, because emotion, when you get it, it can really betray what you want done Sometimes emotion is really good though. And it can fuel your fire to go do things like you're like, you know what? I don't care. I'm getting this done. Yeah. yeah. You you need it on those signs, but there's many times where it betrays you. And so like stepping back and looking at a 30,000 view of your business, your life is so important, especially when the fires start to happen. Cause you go, Oh my gosh, there's a fire truck coming that I couldn't have seen. Someone called it for me. And this is what happens when you build a team. There's other people that get involved 
and they're there to help you. And you, and you forget that they're there sometimes and you forget what they can actually do to help you. And you also forget that they don't even need you to tell them they know they're on it. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Don't react, respond. I'm writing that down, man. I'm writing that down. I'm putting that up on my wall somewhere. Cause yeah. that's great. That's like, man, you want to talk about just, just life advice too. Like don't react. Respond. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, holy crap. A lot of that too is every <clears throat> time that we get stressed out or anxiety hits us, um, not every time, but let me say 99% of the time mm -hmm. within a short time, it goes away Yeah, because there's certain life events that take a while, but very likely whatever is bothering you mm -hmm. the next day or the day after it's not that big of a deal anymore and right. you've already processed it. So when you learn to respond instead of instantly react and you're responding to it and go, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to th think this through. There's, there's a really good proverb. And I'm just going to go through it really quick. It's yeah, like yeah. a Japanese proverb. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and it talks about this warrior has a son, and and uh, he goes out and uh, he cuts his like his arm falls, off, get cut off or something. Okay. I'm going to butcher this thing. <laughs> yeah, great. But and, and the whole that. thing's like, oh, that sucks. And he's <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe we'll see. And then like the next day, uh, the army shows up and is recruiting all the kids, like all the 18 year olds. And he's like, and he can't go because he he lost like his arm. And so they go, wow, you're lucky. And he goes, oh, we'll see. And so yeah. anyways, this just keeps going and going and going. So it's like, it's like a good thing and then a bad thing and a good thing and a bad thing. It's like, you never know what happens in life, how it's going to affect different situations. That's like the moral of the story is like, is it a good thing? I don't know. We're going to find out. Is it a bad thing? I don't know. We're going to find out. Like one thing you made this comment of like, oh, we just got triple charged and we did all this. It's like, well, there could be a really good thing with this. And the thing I'm is like, well, good thing we didn't give it to a client and that didn't happen to a client. Good thing right. it happened to you. So there is a exactly. good in this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the part where I think a lot of people, and this is not just about business and entrepreneurship. This is life. Like before you come to a conclusion of what is going on in your life, you really want to process and go, I don't know, maybe this could be a good thing in the long run. I don't know yet. Let's see what happens. And, and, and a lot of it is, is especially with hardship, people are like, it's the worst thing. This is happening. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding out, I'm like, you know, that's what creates real people. And it's, it's really interesting. I, I think I heard Alex Hermosi or some other person say this on their podcast. I think it is him though. He goes, if God was to create a human being that could handle stress, how would he do that well he would put him through very stressful situations so he could learn how to handle it right yeah. and he just broke this down I, i've heard people say this but he broke it down really good and he just goes you know, if they wanted someone to learn how to win how would they teach him how to win he would teach him how to lose yeah. how if you wanted to create a really strong-minded person what would you you'd give them challenges to create a strong mind so like we have all these things in life as we're building this especially on like entrepreneurship and business like if you want to build a million dollar business, okay, there's things along the way you're going to have to learn. And, you, and, and if you don't learn it, you ain't, it's not going to work. Like you made taxes, you got to save, you're going to have to leadership. Well, if you want to build a 10 million a year business in sales, we're just what, what you sell a year, you're going to need a different skill set than you're going to need to build a 1 million. If you want to build a hundred million dollar a year business, yeah. you need a different skill set than you have at a 10 million. And people forget that like, that's the journey of life too. Like we start at zero and then we go until we die, but we go through these phases of life and we're learning things. And if we don't take the time to really look inwardly and also go, who do I need to become to go achieve my dreams and goals? Mm -hmm. We forget. And so we put all these dreams and goals out and we're like, and we put them on our whiteboards and we go, oh my gosh, I'm going to go build a hundred million dollar company. Uh -huh. And and then we get discouraged. You know why we get discouraged? Because to get to build a hundred million dollar company, you have to become somebody that you have not been before. That is actually how you go build a hundred million dollar company. It's not putting the goal out, coming up with the idea. It's becoming the person along the way is what actually even matters also. But that's what it takes to actually go do that stuff. Right. Oh, that's awesome. And like, I think you know, we get intimidated because, you know, it's great to set a lofty goal, right? It's great. Like I'm going to go do this and I know I'm going to go do this, whether it's a hundred million dollar business or whatever your goal is. Right. And we also get intimidated because we try to bite it off all in one big chunk too, mm -hmm. you know, and that's part of, I think, along with what the journey is, it's going to be a little bit, you're going to learn 
a little something here and a little something there. And you don't necessarily know where those are going to come from either. You know, like I'll be honest, I had absolutely no idea I'd be sitting here with you today after like leaving high school and all of a sudden we're partners in a business together and I'm here in Dallas doing a podcast yeah. with you. Like you never know where that's going to come from. Right. So you got to be open to like learning all those things too. You know, you get kind of, if you get scared and shut off, you know, it's just like, you're going to kind of, you, know, you get discouraged. It just, it happens. Right. So. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's good, man. I mean, I can talk all day on this topic, but I think we'll, yeah. we'll wrap it up. I think I'm going to end with one question to you though, is I believe we're almost done with the year, right? We're in coming up on the November. It's yep. like October 25th or October 26th. Yeah. This time next year, yeah. I want you to make a bold prediction of how many techs that we have on the platform. Oh, how many technicians? Yeah, how many techs are we going to have on the platform? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with 2,500. I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable. I do. That's okay. it's big, but that's where I, that's where we want to be. I okay, think, I think that's what's going to happen in one year. Yeah, LC's going to have twenty five hundred yeah. techs at least on the app. Yep. Is the prediction servicing all fifty states? Let's go get it, man. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming yeah. on, Ted. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. I appreciate it, dude. All right. All right, man. Yeah. Out. Oh.